Adult hypertension is the most common chronic disease and poses a significant public health problem. It is characterized by blood pressure values above 114 systolic or 19 diastolic, with a specific threshold for diabetic patients and patients with kidney disease. Systematic screening is recommended for patients over 30 years old, diabetics, and pregnant women to prevent severe complications. There are various risk factors that can contribute to hypertension. These factors can be categorized into changeable and non-changeable factors. Modifiable factors are those that can be changed or controlled, while the others are inherent and cannot be changed. One non-modifiable risk factor is age. As individuals grow older, the blood vessels tend to lose their elasticity and become stiffer, which can lead to an increase in blood pressure. This is why hypertension becomes more common with advancing age. Consuming excessive amount of salt, excess weight puts an extra strain on the heart, leading to increased blood pressure and also a lack of regular exercise or physical activity activity. Primary hypertension is more common, while secondary can be caused by other medical conditions and can benefit from a specific treatment. The pathogenesis of hypertension involves multiple factors, including increased cardiac output, which is the amount of blood pumped by the ventricles, and the heart rate. Impaired regulation of the sodium eliminated by the kidneys is also a factor that contributes to hypertension. Excessive secretion of vasoconstrictive substances such as hormones that involve in the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which can cause blood vessels to constrict, leading to increased resistance to blood flow and elevated blood pressure. Decreased secretion of vasodilatory substance also can be a cause, as well as increased and sympathetic activity and structural abnormalities, which can be caused by the stiffening or the narrowing of the arteriolus. Secondary hypertension can result from renal causes such as chronic kidney disease or kidney failure or from vascular causes. Conditions that affect the blood vessels supplying the kidney such as artery stenosis, endocrine causes, and including primary hyperaldosteronism, involves excessive production of the aldosterone hormone, which leads to sodium retention and potassium levels, contributing to elevated blood pressure, as well as Cushing syndromes, which are characterized by excessive cortisol production. Sleep apnea syndrome can cause a repeated episode of low oxygen levels and contribute to a blood pressure spikes due to the increased sympathetic nervous system activity. Some medication can induce secondary hypertension, such as anti-inflammatory drugs, corticosteroids, oestrogen, progesterone, and sympathomimetic drugs, as well as some toxic causes like alcohol and cocaine. Now let's talk about diagnosing a patient with hypertension. Systematic screening is recommended for patients over 30 years old, diabetics, and pregnant women. Hypertension might be indicated by neurosensory signs like headaches, buzzing, or tinnitus, which refers to perception of sounds in the ear or head without any external sound source. Three measurement methods are utilized to measure the blood pressure. First, clinical measurements. The patient is in semi state or lying down position for at least 5 minutes, and the blood pressure is measured in both arms, repeated multiple times at heart level. Hypertension is diagnosed if the blood pressure readings are equal or greater than 114 systolic or 19 diastolic. Secondly, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. This method provides comprehensive information beyond clinical measurements. It assesses blood pressure over a 24-hour period. ABPM enables the comparison of daytime and nighttime blood pressure, with a normal decrease of at least 10% during the night. This method distinguishes three types of subjects based on their blood pressure patterns. Diapers experience a decrease in night blood pressure. Non-diapers exhibit non-significant change in night blood pressure and risers in culture and increase at night. It is important to note that nocturnal hypertension is more severe and carries a higher cardiovascular risk than daytime hypertension. Hypertension is diagnosed if the 24-hour ABPM readings are equal or greater than 113 systolic or 18 diastolic. The third method is home blood pressure monitoring. This method involves taking three consecutive blood pressure measurements for three days. Hypertension is diagnosed if the blood pressure readings consistently remain above 135 systolic and 85 diastolic. Hypertension, if left uncontrolled, can lead to various complications affecting different organs and systems in the body. For example, in the brain, hypertension increases the risk of developing cerebral vascular disease, with ischemic strokes being a significant concern. In the eyes, Hypertensive retinopathy is a condition characterized by damage of the blood vessel in the retina of the eye, leading to vision problems and in severe cases even vision loss. In the heart, hypertension puts extra strength on the heart, which can result in severe cardiovascular complications. This includes chest pain, heart attack due to the blockage of blood flow in the heart muscle, left ventricle hypertrophy or the enlargement of the heart's main pumping chamber, and finally can lead to health failure or the heart's inability to pump blood effectively. Uncontrolled hypertension 
hypertension can also affect the aorta, increasing the risk of aortic dissection, which is potentially a life-threatening condition. A persistent high blood pressure can damage the blood vessels in the kidney, leading to a condition called nephroangiosclerosis. This can impair kidney function and may eventually progress to a chronic kidney disease or kidney failure. Hypertension can contribute to the development and the progression of peripheral arterial disease, a condition characterized by the narrowing or blockage of the arteries that supply blood to the legs and feet. In smokers, hypertension further worsens the already compromised blood flow to the lower extremities. Treatment of hypertension aims to achieve target blood pressure goals based on age, risk factors, and other associated pathologies. Initial management involves lifestyle modifications such as losing excessive weight, particularly if overweight or obese patient, which can significantly lower blood pressure levels, smoking cessation, sodium restriction, alcohol limitation, and managing other cardiovascular risk factors, as well as a regular physical activity and stress management. There are five equally effective pharmacological therapeutic classes treatment. First one it ties the diuretics and potassium sparing diuretics, which have an impact on the vasodilatory system and can reduce blood volume through increased renal elimination, as well as potentiate the effect of other antihypertensive drugs. Beta blockers primarily act on the heart, reducing the cardiac output and the blood pressure. They are indicated especially in patients with coronary artery disease, but are not the first line choice for uncomplicated hypertension. ACE inhibitors are commonly used in diabetic patients due to their lack of metabolic side effects. ARBs have similar effects and contradictions as ACE inhibitors. Calcium channel blockers are preferred in elderly patients. We will talk about this medication in separate videos. Treatment indications depend on cardiovascular risk assessment. If patient is in low risk stage, starting with lifestyle modifications alone can be a choice. For moderated risk patients can receive lifestyle modification for 3 months and high risk patients require lifestyle modification plus a medical treatment. Treatment should start with monotherapy as a first line approach. If the blood pressure remains elevated after 1 month, combination therapy might be considered. However, combination therapy can be initiated early in patients with high cardiovascular risk. If combination therapy fails, triple therapy with at least one diuretic is recommended. If hypertension remains uncontrolled despite triple therapy, it is considered resistant hypertension. Therefore, renal denervation using radiofrequency may be considered for this case. Thanks for watching.